All right. Hello, everyone. We have ourselves another chainsaw. Hopefully, we can get this one to work. This is an Echo brand. The model is a CS400. And I uh, got it from this gentleman. And it seemed very disconnected from the overall machine. As in, like, he didn't look like the kind of person that takes care of stuff. So, we're going to see what we're in for, shall we? Right? So we have a little, a little, a little gimpy... Uh, we'll start. It's got a lot of compression, though. Hard to pull, but... have a primer bulb. So, that sounds good. So it sounds like there's fuel in it too. Okay. Start and stop. Some choke. Yeah. Yes, it is. Alright, well I know it runs. This side turn on. So, my concern is I think I have a fear that this cylinder is all scored up. Uh, let's see. I don't know how many inches that is. Uh, probably 16. I don't know. Alright, well, let's see what we have here. Muffler. Muffler. So I bar and chain oil here. It's got a little liquid. I don't know if it says a leak or not. It's definitely leaky looking. Uh, somebody needs a good cleaning. Figure this one out. Notice that this doesn't lock. This looks, definitely doesn't lock the trigger as it's supposed to. Oh no, no, it's supposed to. Okay, so it keeps it from uh, being depressed. You know, depressed to. Increase the throttle, I have to push that first to disable, and then you go like that. Oh, I see. I thought this locked the trigger down. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Anything else? This engine is uh, 40.2 cc's uh, EPA PH2 exhaust. Now let's pull some uh, parts off of here. This looks like an air filter. Air filter housing, that is. It says off that way. Okay, I see. Just goes down like that. Let's check for spark. Look right there. Let's get this cover off. This is a uh, five thirty seconds. Look like that. We have four of them. Again, we have four of those. Alright, 
let's get this handle off. Uh, looks like it uh, uses a similar. Ooh. Oops. Okay. They look similar, but they're not the same. These are actually uh, these are shorter than the ones I took off earlier. These are much shorter. These, these are the ones I took off earlier. So they're a little longer. This one's longer, that was the earlier one. So this. a little longer, the top one. This one here is a little longer, that was that one. That's interesting, I wonder why they did that. It's the same size as the uh, the first ones. Okay, that's good to know. Okay. This looks like, um, ah, we're missing a bolt here. So this is half inch. For some ideas. Anyone? Alright, I gotta hear. Reading manuals is a really good thing. So you have to push this forwards to release that. Okay, so wow. So forced into it. Seems like a problem right there. I'm gonna get this off. This is also 5.30 seconds. Okay, so I kind of sat and screw set inside of there. Should be free. Oops. Okay, so it's like a it's, like it's spring loaded. Interesting. Now that's going to be a little tricky. So I'm not sure. That just kind of like. That should be free. It's like it's spring-loaded. Interesting. Yeah, 
that's going to be a little tricky because I'm not sure. That just kind of like. Let's just f make sure we get this working right. At least know how this functions, you know. So I'm assuming it goes in between these two. into there. Spring. Can't really tell what this does. I went around that. It's got tension from something. Alright, we'll get a we're gonna have a little hard time figuring that one out, right? Three, three Phillips screws. Not screws, sorry. It's a screw or a bolt. I don't know what the heck you call that. Got three of those. And that was uh, where the spark plug boot was, so that kind of held it on a little. So I had to get this out of the way. Fuel, bar and chain oil. So it looks like five sixteenths. Most important, oh no, that's exactly what I said. I was really concerned about. Actually, is it marred up? No. Let's see. Let's check it for score marks, right? No, it's just greasy. Yeah, it's greasy. I want to know what's up with that uh, ring though. That piston ring looks like it's seen better days. Either way, inside of it looks pretty nice. I don't know what all the extra liquid is, so we'll have to figure that out. So we're going to continue pulling this apart. Let's get the spark plug out. I want to get it out so I can... That's a three-fourths, by the way. Got a really nice electrode on it. That's a CJ14 champion. Just so we can, uh, you know, before we do it, let's make sure this is on the up, going upwards. Okay. 
it's going up and it's past the uh, hole for the exhaust because uh, it sucks when this gets stuck in there. It's lefty Lucy. Let's see if we can get a little bit more leverage with this. That's cool. What's this from? This is from up here. Like this. Oh, interesting. Didn't know these came out. They come out. Good to know. They're the same size. I mean, that's a 12. Grounded to the body here for the off is uh, on the left side. Positive here. It's in the top. So this top wire here is to the on. All right. So what I was saying is uh, the um, this grounded part here. This that's this wire. That's on the uh, that's on the left side here, and then this top wire here so the positive because it slide out yep it sure does so that just kind of holds the wires so put that over there okay there you can see a lot clearer now so this one here goes later back on. Alright. Let us take this magneto off. What are the chances it's 530 seconds? Pretty high. on it. Interesting. Yeah, they're both the same. Well, we have ourselves that spacer. So that spacer was... There's two spacers, actually. 
like that. One there, and one right here. So I don't, 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 don't get confused. There's two spacers back here. One here, and one right here. I look like that. They're both the same too. So. Unclip this. Magneto. So this um, clutch tends to be um, reverse threaded, so turn it to the right to take it off. I'm going to use this tool. Just kind of slide it in between here. Like that. like the uh, all the witness marks or Fords like that okay oops things fell out from the back <sighs> okay gotcha so what do we have we have we have bearings. Sorry, we have this bearing here. That was that. That's inside of here. And then, oops. Sorry. Okay. See, that just goes right in between there. So I have bearings there. And then this washer is on top of that. So it's two washers, typical, both sides. <laughs> A lot easier to instead to get this thing out. So, okay, so just like that. Well, add this, put this back on. Take a punch. Just trying to shock it. Let's hit it two times. Let's see if that flywheel wants to come off. Get this out of the way. And that Phillips. You know what? I should uh, double check that, see if it's the same as these. these other these have washers on them. Did not. There we go. Okay. Do a cross when you loosen these because you know they are under a lot of torque. It's using an automotive all the time. Same. Okay, so we have four of those. Alright, we have four of those. 
and they all look the same, four of them. All right, let's see what's happening here. Looks like the disc lifts up. Okay. It lifts up, but I figured out a, there's a screw right there. I think it's a Phillips. I think that might be holding things down, but I'm not sure. Okay, I forget the washer. There's a washer there too. a washer like that. Okay. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. okay, it looks like we have a bunch of hoses. I can probably just pull these off. to get this carburetor out of the wall. Gotta get this handle off. It's in the way. Looks like that. spring there pushed against that okay and this hooked onto there good to know so I should be able to That out of the way, right? Okay, gotcha. We already took that screw off. Those two should. Oops, 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 oops. fuel lines here. One up top here went back in. And this is attached to that. Okay. I'm saying uh, this is attached to that. This line was all the way to the furthest left top. No, 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 furthest left. Okay, the primer bulb. This bottom one on the carb kind of snaked around. And this to the carburetor. Okay. This carburetor has lots of things happening here. 
the third one going out. This one goes right to the fuel, into the uh, engine. So I don't know if it's attached to the carburetor. I mean, attached to the fuel filter. And then this one here, I don't know. Okay. Primer bulb. This was the primer bulb also. What kind of carburetor is this? Oh, Walbro. Okay. It's a Walbro carburetor. Usually right around here. Looks like an 820A, that's what that I'm seeing. A Walbro 8J, is that a J? I don't know. I want to clean this off, get a better idea. All right, so this looks, for the most part, fairly free. Mm -hmm. There you go, just slides. Right out. Should be able to. Okay. Aha! Carb. We have a gasket here. It's our first real gasket. One. I needed to pull it off to get to this. Okay, we did a good job. All right, we are down to the bare plastic. Oh, look at Gasco. Anyway, we have four of these. So we just have some gasket material. That's all I was uh, keeping the for the halves. That is. All right, looks good. And what do we have here? Okay. So now that piston ring right there. Oh no, this whole thing's like overheated. 
Yeah, okay. Boy, that sucks. Okay. Good thing is, the wall of the cylinder is good. Yeah, there's nothing. Oh, we so lucky. No way. Wow. Okay, but this piston shot. This thing is, like, cooked. I don't know if I can just get the head of that. I bet you they put the wrong fuel in this thing. As in, like, the mixture was too, um, it didn't have enough oil. So it got hot on the exhaust side. And it just melted this thing. Wow. Yeah, so you're getting no seal. And you can't get any compression on this, you know? Okay, well that's that's why I ran so badly. Or like the owner had such a hard time starting this thing. Okay, great. Cylinder, uh, that's a little hard to get good angle on. Uh, maybe. So that looks pretty good. There's no. S no marring or anything like that. It's pretty amazingly smooth. So we <laughs> we're good with this top part of the cylinder. So I cleaned some parts. They're over here. You can't really see them. And I need to uh, clean this in the ultrasonic cleaner. So let's just pull this apart. We have a gasket that's underneath there and a. Uh, this is a rubber boot. These are Phillips screws. These are little short ones of washers. Gasket. Okay, that works. All right, I want to. I already put this through the ultrasonic cleaner, the yeah, muffler, but I want to do it again. But this someone to take the. Uh, Spark arrestor off, so. Again, get out. It says little, little tiny rubber bushings here, too. So let's pull those off. Okay, we'll keep that. These um, these are oil seals. Sorry. The piston cylinder and or jug, I think it has multiple names, was uh, so scored. The grooves were so deep that it was just unsalvageable, and there was lots of aluminum transfer. The piston itself, as you saw earlier, was pretty uh, bad itself, and that was not salvageable. So I needed a new jug and a new um, piston. 
In this next video, I'm going to show you how to build a uh, DIY um, warm gear remover. You can also watch this video in full entirety in the description below. You'll there'll be a link to it. The second way to do this, right? Again, use the three fourths to a half inch. I'm sorry, not this one. We want this, the reducer. So we're going to do a half inch here to three fourths. And so screw that on. And then we take this three fourths to quarter inch right, hex pushing, and we screw that into here. Like that. Right. And we take the bolt. Right, it's going to get a little, little, little lube. Actually, no, you know what? I'm forgetting something really important. So I have a whole bunch of... Uh, I don't want to destroy the crankshaft, so we're going to use a, like a little bearing. A little ball bearing. If you've watched this channel, that those bearings are from the, uh, the saw that I fixed. And take this, put it on top of there, like that. So that way, we don't damage the crankshaft when we tighten down the bolt on it, right? Okay. Put a little, put a little oil on the uh, bolt itself. This will increase the overall torque we can get out of this. Let's see that, that screws all the way down inside. Feels a little sloppy, but it works. So, there we go. And that's it. Voila, there we go. It is off. And where's my bearing? My bearing go. Okay, it's over there. Okay, as you can see, I pulled it right out. Okay, so that, with that, and then that right there. Cool? Alright, so let's see, I should unscrew that. Maybe not so easy. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, let's see how much we got to struggle here. Bingo. See, and that's that. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And that's just pressed onto there. Now, why why do we need to um, know how to pull this, this bearing out? That's pretty simple. The, uh, I'll just know, the orientation's like this. Okay, the, this rubber gasket here that covers the bearing, it's an oil seal, sorry. All right, this needs to be replaced sometimes, so they leak, so that's why we're doing that. So it's been over a year, and I hate to do this to myself. It's actually been a year and say five months, and I've been working on this Echo Trimmer, I mean uh, CS500 chainsaw, and uh, CS400, and I got some parts finally. Um, 
Not because it just arrived, that would be horrible shipping and delivery. But more along the lines of just like, uh, you know, I'm getting back to the project. So let's start off with like uh, this company, great company called Saw. Saw again. Sawagain.com. And they sent me, um, I bought the uh, cylinder head, I mean uh, the cylinder jug here, that thing. And, uh, and I got this tool here, this tool is to press my worm gear back on. So yeah, those two things, this is, these are the, this is the information you might want. So that's the part number and the, uh, the product name description. Okay, and it's the item number stuff right there to your left, sorry. All right, so that's that. And this here, I, you know, I need to get a new piston and ring, and uh, this should work. So this is, uh, again, for the CS400. That's the part number, and that's the size, it's 40 millimeters. Comes with a ring. <laughs> One shot, don't break it, hopefully. Anyway, if not, I'll try to save this ring. Well, I can't because, you see, it's scored to death. This piston shot. So let's start with this. All right, so I'm a little uh, worried about this part flying away. So that's why we have this uh, aluminum tray. But I don't know if you can see it here. See that aluminum? It's like a ring. It just kind of holds this piston in place. And if you look here, you can see the piston has an arrow going that way. So... We have the new piston, also an arrow, facing that way. So remember the orientation, it's really important. So let's, uh, I like to mark stuff. I'm like, we're going to go like that, put an arrow this way. Let's go let me know. Arrow on top points that way, arrow on the bottom goes that way. Gingerly take this out, so... That's a good start. Okay. That's out. And that's it. So let's tap that out. One of these, I don't know if it's uh, they're symmetrical, but usually one one direction works, or both directions will work. All depends on the manufacturer. Yeah, that one's moving, all right. already open. That's funny. All right. The orientation of things. So, so we know that that is how that's going. Right? So, go like that. Pop this on like that. Right. Grab the new pin. Oh, I'm not prepared. I hate when I do that. Waste your time. Okay, do a little assembly lube here on this. Hoping that this is a good workflow. Hmm. 
All right, there you go. That went in. Probably gonna tap it in some more. Let's see if I can just push it in. Yeah, in, but not all the way. Yeah, it doesn't seem to. It comes out any any side. So we need to s offset it just enough so we can get that uh, those clips in that we took off. So this pin's a little push back a little bit, so that way I can uh, slide these on pretty easily. Get that in that groove. Yep, that's good. Sorry for blinding you. But one of us got to see. And it sure as heck's going to be me. Alright, so. Let's put that on. Double check the grooves, make sure it's in it. Yeah, just spin it a little. See, so make sure it's in the grooves. Yep, more right. grooves, we're good. Let's see. All right, make sure everything's good. Arrow up top. Arrow right here. Arrow up top, sorry. Arrow right. Hey, when I make these containers adult proof, hold yourself. So, the uh, manufacturer, uh, this is, uh, this brand is, uh, Little Red Barn Junior and Piston Kit. They actually gave me those little tiny retainer pin, retainer clips. So, in case you are worried about it, don't. Okay, let's take a look at this ring. It's important to pay attention to this. There are, you can see there's a groove, right? It, like it, it, it curves like that, if you, you can see. Let's see. We can let our ring. That's important to pay attention to. Not all rings have it, but when they do, you don't want to miss out. Okay. Let's see that pin there. Uh, boy, this is hard to focus on. Somewhere right around there. Hmm. It's so tricky. Right there, maybe? Yeah, okay. So there's a pin. It's like right at the top of this piston. You want to slide this ring with the curvy part. Like that. Okay, so let's see if we can put this on without breaking it. Oh, this is nerve wracking because I've broken these before and have to wait like seven days just to get this part. Alright. 
All right, we did it. We didn't break it. Whatever you do, do not put a screwdriver on this when you try to pull these things off or put them on. It's just going to break it. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Okay. So we have two oil seals so we're going to get on. Uh, this is the part number. <laughs> it's called uh, Shenandoah Seal Oil. So it's uh, one of that's a, a language thing. Anyway, uh, that's the part number. And uh, it's the same one for both. It's the same part for both. So that's uh, V5050000011. So these oil seals, uh, you know, you'll see that <laughs> I was like caught off guard. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be an easy project, yeah. And then and that didn't end up that way. I wonder if, did I get, I wonder if I got new bearings. I don't think I did because I didn't think I needed them. Uh, let's double check. Yeah, I did not. So, this just goes on like that. Now let's put this all back together with the uh, let me see Permatech gasket tackiness high high tack. So we're on the intake side right here, and uh, it's just it looks a little I don't know looks like something's on there right. There's a gasket that goes there, and that's our this is our this is our information. It's a part number V one zero three zero 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 two nine zero. Echo gasket intake side, and oh, that's a match. Stuff is super, 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 super messy. There's nothing about this that's not messy. Okay, now this has a slight tilt angle upward, so it angles towards the sky when you put it on, towards the spark plug, so just remember that. What is that? Not seem to be working. Hmm. Pretty sure I got the right ones. Alright, so I found them. They're actually a little girthier. It's those two. They're not all the same. Okay, where were we again? <laughs> Try not to make a mess. This gasket maker. So this has a spark arrestor here under this, and that just kind of sits here like that. We're going to need these two friends of ours. Might be too much.
Okay. Now I'm thinking that I don't need to put any on the uh, on the barren part, but I'm not really sure. So if you have an idea, why don't you go ahead and share it with the world if we should do that or not? I said a barren part like that part right there. Yeah, I'm not really, not really sure if that's uh, necessary. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna give this about uh, so give it like uh, give it another like uh, ten minutes or so. Let it set up a little bit. It's kind of droopy all over the place here. It's nothing about this. It's not messy. I'll let that set up and then we'll... Uh... Alright, so it's been about, say, like seven minutes. And uh, look at my white marks here on the map. White marks on here, so we know that's this side that goes down. Perfect. Okay. It's looking good. It's got in. Screw those down. Wonder if I should have put the worm the worm gear on first. Oh well. That is what it is. So we got a lot of stuff we got to get together here to slide this worm gear on. So this is the worm gear, and the flat part will sit like that against that. So put that on like that. Now this needs to be pressed down, right? So the toolkit for installing this comes with a couple things, right? We have this. And this spins here, just kind of pushes down onto that. But to do that, we got to get it set up, right? So to get it set up, we need a couple of things. It comes with this bag of goodies, right? So we're going to need a washer that slides all the way down to push against the worm gear to protect it. And we're going to need one of these end caps. I mean, these are left hand threaded, so it's too big. This has, this has threads on the inside here, threads on the outside, that allows for... See, I'm turning it to the left, lefty-tighty on this. It allows me to uh, attach this tool to it. So you can probably get a couple different kind of saws on there. That's the cool part about this. Hopefully this tool will keep on giving some threads here. Oh, yeah. Let's see how to left hand thread that on here. Yeah. Ooh, I like it. That's a sound of good compression. All right. I don't know if we need to kind of stop to stop it from spinning or not, but whatever. Okay, then we kind of kind of spin this down here. Lucy, spin that down. So we're gonna hold this steady. Oh, 
So I'm going to turn this to the right. Here's the thing, when I, when I took this off, I never really measured uh, how far down it goes. Yeah, so. Might be, uh, that might be uh, the biggest mistake, but anyway, I remember it being very, um, pretty much close to the very, very oil seal, the very, very next, right next to the oil seal is what I remember. It's good. It's getting there. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to go anymore. So what does that mean? Is that it? I guess, I guess it's uh, idiot proof. Yeah, it goes more. to be had. Hmm. All right, I'm going to say that, that is a win. Yeah. Let's see to get this thing off. Yeah. That'll be fun. Okay, this tool is well worth it. Okay. Then we slide that into this little space here. All right. Okay. You can definitely see the appeal for the, uh, Older saws. This thing is so plastic. Yeah. Not, not a lot of confidence you get out of this. So we use uh, four of these. Now let's try something a little different. We're gonna magnetize this. Yeah. Like that. There we go. And I'm going to use God's flashlight to line those holes up. I have a feeling Loctite might be a good idea on these things, but we're running with those for now. Come on, Keyway. There you go. All right. So this has no washer, it's just on there, it's a 12 millimeter. Okay. So I think it's time to get this Euler disassemble assembly back on and uh, we have uh, three Phillips screws for this. One of the reasons why you want grabbed earlier. They look like that. Sorry I haven't been showing you the screws when I put it back together. I am. Um, Phillips. goes into here. This is the oiler. Um, it's got a hole there, a passage there, and a passage down there.
Oops, it goes there. Let's put on the clutch. So the clutch is a sandwich. So we're going to have a Baron first. There's two of them. And then the small one with the wider inside diameter goes into there. We have this roller bearing. Right. It goes on. It doesn't seem to matter what side that goes on. It goes on like that. See those the shiny metal part? It's got grooves right here. It's been cut onto that. So that's gonna go. That's your witness marks. It goes down like that. Clutch. This curvy part goes out. And it's the opposite threads, so you're going to turn it to the left to tighten it. Oops. Really? What have I done? So we need to immobilize the engine from like moving. So this little thing again. Let's just try to get this very, very bottom. Okay, so you wanted to get the piston to B on the upward stroke. And what do I keep calling a Loctite? It's thread locker. Okay, so right here, those teeth marks, right? Um, Those teeth marks are very important to look for wear. If it looks like it's too deep, I mean, you can measure it. The, the, the manufacturer has sizes. It tells you, like, uh, that's too deep. But that drives the chain. So if that is just too deep, those grooves, you have to replace that sprocket. So that's a little annoying. I had to take uh, <laughs> all this side off again. But... This has to go on first, because it sits in a groove right here. And that hole, the hose goes through, so... Okay. So there we go. That's got to go in like that. It's right here. And the Craftsman, right? This plastic part is part of the casing versus like this where it's the entire body is just one the unit is the engine is by itself you know you can like pull this off and start this the craftsman this bottom curve of par curved part here that this sits in is the bottom part of the engine and the other one a horrible design oh, anyway you're not buying craftsman because you want longevity so, it's a shame but whatever you get the point so I'm trying my best to film this, but it's going to be a little hard for me because it's just like it's all kind of close. Sometimes it looks a little dark. That might be a good idea. All right. So we have <laughs> this is like so darn tricky. All right. Okay. Here's our carb, right? 
adjuster side is going to be over here, like that. So it sits kind of like that. Right. There is... Hmm. There's this thing here. For the intake. Hmm. That's much later on. Okay. Alright, so... I'm already confused. Let's see. Alright, here's our choke lever, right? Choke lever right here. Okay, that sits in that groove there. It's in there like that. There's the intake gasket. V1030002802. Right, that goes somewhere here. Right back here. So let's just set that upside for a second. It goes like that. Right. Um, okay, so it has like uh, these little, two little two little knobs here. Looks like it sits on that, so. I don't know if there's a side that's specific, but. We're putting that on there and we're committing to it. Okay. Oh, it's, there you go, okay. Still confused. All right. All right. This hose here. This bottom hose here goes. The separate hose goes on to here. Like that. Because that's going to come around to the carb. This curved one here, that makes sense. That little thick dent, I'm sorry, this is the shorter of the two here. This goes onto here. Okay. Right. This goes to the top of the carburetor. This is a, like a crankcase, crankcase breather hose. Something like that. Alright, so plumbing on this thing is a little tricky to film. But I'm trying my best so you can see how to do it. You'll see there's a hole here. The hole matches this hole right here. And these two bolts. There's two bolts that go, the choke goes right in here. So something like that. Right, okay. Now there's two holes right here. Right? This is gonna be for the choke, that's gonna be for the throttle. Okay. So. We have two really long bolts. With Phillips heads, like that. Yeah, that's what's gonna hold us together. So that kind of goes in like that.
so get my fingers out of your way. Like that. So that's lined up, right? Two hoses, right? The yeah. so this remember this so that goes over to the right. It kicks over to the right to get around the uh, to get around and hook onto there, just like this, right? And we need to. Uh, What are the chances? Our primer bulb, right, has two ports here. That outside one gets this long hose like this. And the shorter one's gonna go on the other one right there. Right there. Can you see? Sorry. Right there. Okay. So let's see how easily this is going to work out for us. Already unsure. Let me connect this first. Yeah. All right, so the choke is connected first. Sits in here. Like that. See these holes there? Okay. But we need to get not as easily done, but we'll try. Let's see. Can we get that on first? Maybe we can just drop this in. Yeah, this thing is, is a fighter. Let's kind of pull that through. Alright, let's get it out of the way. So, this hose here. This is the best way to do this. I'm gonna grab it. This is the short line. Push it on, right? Keep the pressure on it.
Yeah, that worked. That worked really well. Difficult. So I can guess a lot of stuff here. Maybe I gotta go underneath. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to change my path. Go under this. Promising for sure. Oh yeah, that'll work. I think that'll work. Should we just kind of drop that in like that? for here. That's not even it. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, that's better. That's the nipple. Okay. Oh, man. Alright, now we gotta get this out of the... Well, yeah. We should slide that down. So. Let's double check. <laughs> that is the wrong one. This is for the fuel filter. So there's another, there's another uh, hose in here. This is our problem. It's there's too much of this, right? And this is the return line. So uh, put a little bit of silicone spray right there. It's kind of work it, you know. Just kind of work it down. That's what I'm using. I'm not a, they're not a sponsor. So. It's a PB blast, by the way. So, so this fuel return line is tricky. All right, so I saved this for you so you can see what's going on. So what I had to do, right there, that's the return line. So I had to reach all the way up in there with this thing just to get a grip on it. So I can go like this. See? All right. So I need to see that. That is tricky. Okay. So you can see that sits and grabs this so that way it stays in place so make sure that's lined up okay, so this part goes on first I should I can go like that yep that does work okay famous last words uh -huh. Maybe, maybe we gotta lift this up a little. Come on. Okay. There you go. Now that goes inside of that linkage. Right back here. 
on the uh, throttle. You know, everything tells me I should actually rebuild this carburetor. I do have a rebuild kit for it, but even if I was going to do it, I don't, I don't think I'm going to record it. I've recorded so many carburetor rebuilds, you already know what they look like. Let's just put it back together and see how it works, and then can think about rebuilding it from there. Anybody here uh, saw Raised by the Wolves? It's that HBO uh, series. Well, I saw it recently. Well, not recently. I saw it last year. And uh, I had not seen Vikings. So some of you might be able to figure out where I'm going with this. So Vikings... The actor from Vikings, the principal, Ragnar Lothbrok, from the like first two, two and a half seasons. He was, uh, yeah, it's quirky. He's a quirky guy, quirky kind of actor, you know. And uh, it's not a bad thing. Just his mannerisms are fascinating. Cool. It's unique to him, definitely. I don't know how much of it was intentional with the uh, with the with the direction that is. But uh, there you go. That works. But uh, this character Rod Ragnar Lothbrok is. Basically, like he's got he's got typecasted. I mean, he's just acting like Ragnar Lothbrok in space. You know, it's uh, it's pretty funny to watch. I was like, man, I didn't. Either his range is really limited, or he's so accustomed to playing Ragnar Lothbrok that anything else feels strange. You know. Well, either way, I thought it was funny. I was like, hey, he's acting like Ragnar Lothbrook, but in space, you know? He starts off as an atheist, and then he discovers God. Well, whatever, not God, but something that he's experiencing. It feels like a supernatural being of some sort. Well, either way, he becomes radicalized. Thought that was pretty neat. Mm. Okay, so that works well. So, just to let you know, that kind of that slides between. See there, the, those two teeth right there. That helps keep it in place, it looks like. Well, that's, well, that's four. Jesus. Man. Ten hours later. So this handle. This trigger, I mean. How does this work? Oh, boy. Go back.
Alright, so this hooks onto that, and then this it's pushes something. This pushes. Oh, I see. That part there, right? So here pushes against that right there to push this trigger back. And then this here hooks onto here. I mean, onto here. How do we get this on? I don't know. It's pretty straightforward. Just, just no, that's right, because that springs back. So I wanted to something. Alright, we just need to get uh oh, oh so we have a Phillips that Phillips there. That goes in here. One of those triggers where you have to push the top down to push the bottom. Alright, so I'm going to edit this video in a, in a weird kind of way. You already saw me put this side on and this side on. Or maybe you didn't. It depends on how I edit it, right? So, this has to go on first and then you put these sides on and then you bolt down the bottom right here. Okay? So, do it in that order. Remember? Uh, flywheel clutch and then the bolt down the bottom all right and don't forget to put uh, this goes on first before you put on the uh, clutch okay so right down in here is a Phillips washer this Phillips it's the it's what it's this yellow white piece right here this has that on there It's got a washer Phillips on it. So it's a little tricky to get down in there because probably just gonna slide this over a little bit. Yeah. Kinda like I'm gonna have to do the old magnetize. It to hold that like that. That's, that wasn't too bad. Look like that. They sit here, like here and here. Right? Magneto, right? We have two of these. They have washers on them. Kind of get this magnet out of the way. I was a little terrorize you. Turn it so it's out of the way. This, I'm just doing this to line this up, to be honest with you. Okay, so something like that. But right, well we get a. This here is the kill. This one's going to go, let's just kind of like tighten this down a little bit more. Right, so this kill is going to go onto the body, right? So just hold this steady. Feed that through, push that back down. 
There you go. This is a four millimeter metro to set the air gap. Now the air gap has a range for it. You can go from point um, point zero twelve thousandths, or just twelve thousandths of an inch, all the way up to sixteen thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to go. I'm going to thirteen thousandths of an inch. Uh, you can use a business card. That, that also works. If you have no feeler gauge like this. So I'm putting the feeler gauge between the magnets on the flywheel. Make sure. Let's see some really small details here. Okay, right here is a grommet that holds the wires. So, so it opens up like that. Just gonna slide that in. Should we put on the wires first? Hmm. You know what? Get these wires on this side. Yeah, because look, there's uh, also a little bit of plumbing for this. Okay, now put those two in. Got it, didn't lose it. No, this is gonna fight me. that. This top one goes into here like that. Alright, we're good. We're looking good. We need to test this now for spark. So before we go any further, I want to lubricate this cylinder. I'm going to use a little bit of this Marvel Mystery Oil. Not a sponsor. What I've done is going to pour some in the cap. Gonna, so I'm gonna squeeze, drop some down in here. The reason why is because uh, this is dry, and uh, remember, it has never been. been turned on, spun before. Everything's brand new. Alright, so we want to clean the spark plug. We're going to reuse the uh, old champion spark plug that was in it.
Now the gap for this is uh, 24 thousandths to 26 thousandths, 27 thousandths of an inch. I'm going to use um, 25 thousandths of an inch to gap, check my gap, set my gap, sorry. Reason. 25 thousandths of an inch. Looks good to me. Alright, so this seems to generate spark if I go uh, clockwise. Sorry, counterclockwise. I'll look right there. Spark. So we're good. Did you see that? I hope you did. I'll do it again. So we have to remove this gasket now from the muffler, and uh, it's going to be replaced with this Echo gasket, exhaust gasket 6514. Four eight two four. Let's just mark this. This uh, see that side there has the notch. So notch. Notch on that side. To fit your glasses. I use goggles because it protects your eyes a little better. In case when these things break off, it's super dangerous. Yeah. these square rectangular headed things it's gonna like wedge back here And this is these nuts are five sixteenths. So back together. Um, up top here is a wheel. Right, it spins. It's important to make sure that flows freely. You notice that the grooves right here, right, they need to be clean. And look for pinching. If you see any pinching, you probably need to replace this. All right, the teeth on the saw will go that way. So that's how you know the orientation. To kind of grab going forwards, right? So you put this on. So we're gonna... I mean, I think in general we're gonna have to replace this chain, you know? Yeah, so right here. We've got some teeth that don't want to slide in. They're a little rough. So, you don't want to put this on first. That's a mistake. Handle on first. Now the handle has... that little rubber grommet-like thing. That's gonna go on this side here, like that. It sits in there, like that. Because there's a space for that to slide on. Oh, look, there's actually one over here too. Well, I didn't even know. Anyway, so that should go on. 
So, so this is going to be the break. Um, Alright, that touches that. Okay, gotcha. So we need uh, to figure out what kind of fasteners go in here. Mm -hmm. This Phillips. And uh, there's a washer. Got some witness marks, so I'm pretty sure it goes that side down. And that does. I use that flathead hex. Feel a little bit more prepared than what I really am every time I do a set up a shot. Alright, so we got thread locker in both of those. Put this back on. Make sure that, see, make sure this sits inside of here. This is a break. This metal sleeve right here will grab the flywheel and stop it from spinning. It's important that this is functional for your own safety. on for now. Let's so get this top cover on. There's a grommet right here where the spark plug wire comes through. I we should probably put the spark plug in now. Three, three Phillips screws look like this. Right, so this is a little tricky. Uh, we have this is going to be a longer fastener, and this is going to be a little bit of a longer fastener. So we're just going to slide this on the back by the trigger. We have two different sizes. Right, they're hex. Right. The longer one is closer to the magneto. That's what I that's what I think. side, the longer one was at the top, like right here. Come on. Make sure. 
shorter one was at the bottom. So again, that's the shorter one. So the pull star is a little, uh, a little on the sloppy side. And uh, see that groove right there? The groove is important because it helps you uh, tighten things up. So I'm going to go All right, so it took some time to blow this out with some air on both sides, both directions, that way and that way. Some compressed air to clean it out, this is the air filter. We have uh, four of these. Hex screws, so four millimeters for uh, this cover. It's going to be a little hard to get to there. Hmm. This. This. No. Filter on. So that just kind of sits here on top of that. Screw there goes right there. So. It's a little hard to see, but there are some burrs on these. So it's causing things to bind up a little. So what I did, I was just kind of, we kind of marked the ones that were not sitting in the chain groove properly. But we're gonna try to smoothen them out a little bit with the. See how well we do, we did, shall we? So these are the problem spots right here. Let's move those onto the bar. Looks good. Yep, slides right in. There you go. Bars are gone. And some of you are probably screaming, no, don't forget. Well, I did forget. Got a, it's got two sides that, um, well anyway, it looks like this, goes into here, like that. And what happens is, it, uh, 
right here, it pushes against these two, against this one tab here. So it sits in between that. Okay, so it's time to fuel up. Poor power here, again, not a sponsor. Let's see if this thing even primes before we go test. Yeah, this fuel. So I'm going to need this flathead screwdriver to adjust things, right? So let's talk about what's available to us. We have an idle right here. We have a low side and a high side over here. So that's in the on position. Is there a choke? Yep, probably. Let's choke it first. Okay, close the choke because we got a pop. time getting that hole. Okay, here we go. Right there. Let's go uh let's go out. No, we can't go in. Oh it's got limiters on there. I see. Okay, let's go in.
So I took a little time to take this apart and clean it up because there's oil everywhere, unnecessary amounts of oil. I wanted to explain something to you. So the worm gear, remember this thing? Yeah, let's see we, how hard it was to take that off because we had to get that oil seal off. Well, that worm gear, right, spins the little teeth here in this auto oiler. They're right there and just kind of spin like that. Right? And what that does, it matches the RPM of the engine, and that's how much oil it pushes out. But you can control this. See this screw right here? This flathead screw, right? So when this oiler is on, right? You look up underneath the engine, and you can see this screw right here, and you can adjust that, that screw. And it tells you right here, there's some instructions on this here. You want to turn it. Uh, clockwise to minimize the flow of oil so and counterclockwise to increase the flow so this is like a, I guess it's kind of like an, a, a reduction in gear ratio so that's how you can control it you know so you just want to this screw driver will work but yeah it will work so I'm gonna go and turn it clockwise you can keep on testing it, you know, to see uh, see if that makes sense for you. It's all the way in now, so I got it all the way in. I don't know what that means, but we'll figure it out. We'll try it again. So this is what it looks like when it's all put back together. See that screw right there. That's where you adjust the uh, volume of oil. Turn it to your right to decrease, turn it to your left to increase. Over. RPMs a little. On the idle side. Ah, just a little bit. Let's try that. Turn it to the right to speed up the RPMs. RPMs on the idle is on the top. Common mistakes people make is uh, they idle it really hard in, in the very beginning. You want to let this engine heat up for like 30 seconds. That way the thermal expansion on the piston and the cylinder wall matches. Other than that, you get the scoring, which is what I think happens. You know, one of the many common failures for two-stroke engines. You'll see all the time they just turn it on and rev it really high idea. So we're going to look for the uh, oil marks on the uh, cardboard box. We'll let this idle for a little bit and then uh, we'll look at it together. Runs well though. Starts well. It's a good cold start. So you can see that track right there. It's what we just have with our oiler auto all the way turned in. That's not enough oil. That's gonna burn up the chain and, gu and guide, chain and bar. So let's adjust the auto oiler 
to allow more flow of oil. So the manufacturer suggests this idle speed be set to 2400 to 2700. So I have a manual tachometer here. Leave it alone. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna probably rebuild the carburetor. Let's get a bit of feel for it. See if a uh, new rebuild carb will make a difference how it runs. Well, there, it's good for now. Looks like we're gonna rebuild this carburetor together. All right. So this is the part number P zero three three zero 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 three zero. Or probably it's seven zero four seven zero six nine eight and uh, or G three dash one zero one one point two. A lot of numbers here for the product, but that's probably most likely the number. The P zero three three zero 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 three zero. So this is a carburetor rebuild kit. Uh, I'm hoping that it's the right one. So this is our carburetor. Our carburetor here is a Walbro. Walbro. And it is eight. It's hard to see because of the glare. But the number uh let's back it off. Number is yeah, there you go. Might be better. So eight two zero eight eight two zero a. So I think uh, let's see what we can do. So, uh, let's get this disassembled. That's the first thing.
It's a little hard to see, but it's possible I might have damaged a carburetor. This is the one problem with like drilling that Walsh plug out. My first mistake was when I tried to do a center punch, it pushed down a big old gap I had in the very top. I probably should have just tried to just drill that poofy part, because I know the center is pretty hollow down. Um, yeah. I'll clean it off. See, there's like one passage. Sorry, you might not be able to see, but there's a couple passages in here. There's one, two, right there where the drill damaged the carburetor. There's another one, and there's another one off to the side here. So, four passages all together. Yep, alright, we're still gonna continue. Let's see what we end up with. Alright, so we're putting it in all this in the old slide cleaner. Alright, 30 minutes, 45 degrees Celsius. You want to let this heat up first before you uh, put it in the old slide cleaner. It'll make it clean better. Yeah, that's the screen that went there. It just flew out. Let's get the wash plug in. Now it's going to have a curvy side. The curvy side is going to be up top because it needs to expand inside of that hole. So you just put it down, get a punch. Give it a couple taps, it'll expand. Or one, that works. There you go, and that's that. Okay, next thing's gonna be that screen. I'm not pushing hard, I'm just trying to seat it. This is usually my most uh, dreaded part. Okay, so we, oh, these are all new spring because that spring goes flying often. So that spring sits right in there. Just put that in there.
good. So now we want to just check this level with uh, this specialty tool by Waldrow. Not a sponsor. 500-31-1. What you do, right, is uh, so we know this is a W WT, so all WTs are going to be on this side here. It's labeled. So you go like this. You're looking for it to be parallel. Right? Not, not, not bumping up against it or too far below, but all pretty much parallel with that. So we're looking good. So the best way I've found to do this is to lay out your new parts. So this is, and these things are in layers, so you got to rem remember that. Um, so these two would go with hair, and these two would go with there. All right, uh, this softer diaphragm side that. See, so if you look at this one, right, you can tell that, okay, well, we know that this goes down, right? So we know that the, this, okay, so that means this part is here first. It's also keyed, so that's down first. So I'm just reverse engineering that one. And then the part that goes up and down, the diaphragm, it, it, it breathes like this. It creates a uh, suction uh, for during the impulse of the engine as the engine goes up and down, air change, air pressure changes, and this causes this to go up and down like that, and that creates a suction and delivers fuel to the uh, engine. So now we have this here. Now I notice there's a hole there. I don't really seem to like know if there's a right place for that. I think I just took it off without kind of really thinking about it. So hopefully I don't get, if I get too uh, shafted. So like that. Does it matter? Does the hole matter? Well, let's just go like this for now. I'm sure someone, someone will know. Okay, so this side has uh, that part, right? Let's see? A little disappointed the ultrasonic cleaner didn't really do a good job at that. I thought that would be a little shinier. Okay, so those are those witness marks, right? Let's see? So that means 
that that sat like that. Right, so this flexible part goes down first. This, yep. So those holes have to line up. Okay. Of course, this has to go. Kind of, kind of helps you out. It, uh, it does. Uh, that thing to help you out. Now we know this is the idle screw, so that has to be on that side. And it's keyed. So, so. Yeah, okay. Drop it into those holes there. Think it'll work any better? Even though we kind of like drilled a little too much into the carburetor. Only time will tell. Okay, let's do a test. Let's just see what uh, we get for stats on this um, secondary compression, which is the uh, top part of the piston. Not to be confused with the primary compression, which is below the piston. Looks like we uh, top out at a hundred and that's uh, let's call that what? So one. Mm, like a hundred and ten. Bad. Right here at the top of the carburetor. Uh, it might be a little difficult to see, but there is a connector. Should have done this uh, when the machine was, uh, when the carburetor was out, but that connector right there. See, see, see the tarragon um, fuel line? I'm going to connect it like that. And I have it connected to a. Um, Vac. I'm going to switch that to vacuum. I mean, I'm sorry, pressure. Because we need to test the press pressure on the uh, carburetor, see if it's holding. You usually want to do this when it's already out, but let's see, right? So you don't want to go any more than 5 psi, right? So that's that. 5 to 7. You want to watch it. If it holds, that's good. Right, that means the needle is actually seated properly. So you sh I should have a functional carburetor. Only time will tell. Because we did do that weird drilling mistake. Alright, so that's what you want to do. Do it before you install the carburetor. Alright, this is a uh, the new carb. Haven't turned it on yet. Cold start. And we're going to see, uh, see how it goes. Just priming it. Choke it. Let's see what happens, shall we? 
that's a good start. Once you hear that pop, take the choke off or it'll flood the engine. That's good. Alright, so let me adjust the low side here. We'll go in half. Turning clockwise on the low side. Mm, too much. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Counterclockwise on the high and the low. Alright, so I got it to run. I don't like the way it, I can't really adjust the low and high or idle that well. I think the carburetor's just messed up from our little accident. I'll let you see what I'm experiencing. I think we need a new carburetor. It's just it won't stay idling. I adjusted the uh, highs and lows a lot, adjusted the idle screw a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, mistakes happen. It's part of the process. All right, so I installed a new carburetor. Let's see how uh, this works.
I'm going to call that a win. So, wow, that was a lot of fun. Only took me like about a year and uh, nine months. Go team. Hey, listen, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the process. Um, hope it was, uh, it can be useful for you. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I do want to make more videos for you, so your help is really important. If you ever have an inclination to want to go ahead and subscribe, that would be the best thing you can ever do. Don't forget to comment, share it with your friends, and uh, definitely give it a thumbs up or down, whatever. If you have some insight, something we can have done better, let me know. And uh, hope to see you next video, all right? And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that way you can know when I uh, post new stuff. Thanks.